Hey friends, so I'm just gonna take you through three things that you need to do as a new user of ChatGPT, or even a current user, if you don't know this stuff, that's really gonna help you get better outputs and work with this tool. So the first thing I want you to do is just go over to the right-hand side of your screen here, where your settings are, and you can see this menu. So what we're gonna do immediately is go down to settings, then we're gonna to go to personalization, and then we're gonna switch on memory. So depending upon the territory you're in, you may have had this longer than other areas. Memory is really useful because one of the things that people never quite liked about chat PT was the fact that you had to keep reminding it who you are, what you do, the things that you work on, how you work. Now with memory, what you're able to do is just really easily tell ChatGPT, okay, remember I like to do X, or remember this is the structure that I have. And you can manage these memories as well, as you can see here, so you can delete them if you don't like them. Let me quickly show you how this works. So I can just say to ChatGPT, you know, remember I like to code in Python. And then what will happen, you can see here, you get this memory updated feature that then says, Ross likes to code in Python. So chat GPT will remember that. Anytime we go back to code in Python, that's what will happen. So the second thing I'd ask you to do is go back into menu again, then go to this customize chat GPT feature. This is one of the ultimate pieces of this tool that are hugely underrated and not really utilized at all, but nor have I seen OpenAI talk about it a lot. So you go to customize chat GPT and there's two things that we can do here. So this area here, just taking 10 minutes to fill this out is going to save you hours of time because instead of going back and again, like I said before, memory, telling chat GPT, how you like responses, how you can work together, what are the principles that you want it to know about you and your work? You can fill all of that in here. So you just answer these two questions in terms of what do you want ChatGPT to know about you for better responses and how do you want ChatGPT to respond? You can literally play around with those as much as possible. What I would advise is as much as you're comfortable with, give ChatGPT here all of the kind of information about your role and what you do. And then a second component here is then looking at how do you want it to respond? You know, is there a certain style? Is there a certain structure? And then the final things is looking at, do you want ChatGPT to connect to the internet? Do you want it to use DALI, which is image generation? Or do you want it to use code interpreter? My advice to you is always have these two on. I'm not so fussed about DALI from image generation, but these two are really gonna help you in your work. And you can toggle this on and off for new chats. So third and final thing is know what model to use. At the top of your screen here, you have this ChatGPT 4.0 which is an area you can click down and you can see all of the models that are available to you. So for 95% of people, ChatGPT 4.0, the default model that is always put on there is going to be what you need. That's it, you don't need any more out of that. It will do many, many different tasks of all varieties. You can upload documents, you can create images, lots of great things there. Now these other models, and you can see more here as well. So. GPT-4, you don't need to use that right now, it, it's old. GPT-4 Mini, you're only gonna use that if you wanna do things fast, but you're gonna suffer with some quality there. Now, these other two exist because I'm on a paid plan. So with this paid plan, you get a preview of new models. So there's a recent model called O1, which is for, they say, more advanced reasoning. In a nutshell, what this means is if you are deep into mathematics, you're doing scientific work, you're doing deep level coding, however you view that, this is gonna be great for you. These, apparently these models are up to a student PhD level, which is like a 120 IQ or something like that. So they're supposed to be pretty good, but they're mainly built for intensive tasks that need a lot of reasoning. It's not really gonna help the 95% of you who are just looking to get email summarization, they're looking for meeting notes, uh, that kind of thing, it, it's not what it's for or content creation, not for that either. It's really for more of those high level tasks. At the time of recording this, this is still a super new model. So I'm still playing a bit, play around a bit itself, see how you feel. So in sum, the three things that we want to do is, number one, we're gonna switch memory on. Number two, you're gonna set up your custom instructions in ChatGPT. And number three, you're gonna choose the right model for your work. I hope it's helpful and I will speak to you in the next one.